Your Hollywood system stole our sex and co-opted our violence, so there's nothing left for our kinds of movies. <laughs> I did not hit her. It's not true. Clopex? Clopex. Clopex. Up yours, baby. Me and Bubba, my little brother, I listen to you every night. Where in the hell are we? I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Hey guys, thanks for listening to this week's episode of Cult Film Review. I am your host, Cody Everett. I just want to say thank you for downloading us each and every week. It means a lot to us. Also, uh, if you can just subscribe to us on iTunes, it helps us out a lot. Rate us five stars. Again, we appreciate you listening. So this week, we are doing uh, a film called uh, Night of the Demons. came out in 1988. Uh, really excited to talk about it. Can't wait to get into it with the fellas. So you know what? Without further ado, let's start the show. Get into it, <laughs> guys. We're here to talk about Night of the Demons, and I would like to talk about this film, and I'd like to hear what you guys have to say about it because I am exci- excited to talk about it. I'm going to say what I think about this film. What makes it a cult film? Uh, bad acting. Uh, it has fantastic dialogue, in my opinion. Hilarious dialogue made me laugh. I was I was chuckling throughout the whole movie because the dialogue is terrible, but it's it's so bad it's good. Mm-hmm. You know. So what I want to know, Chris, is what I want to know is what. What what did you get from this as 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 made it have the cult status that it has? So I'm definitely gonna agree with you on the acting side of it. You know, it is atrocious for the most part. Oh, it's terrible. Um, but at the same time, that's what makes it fun. I mean, that's sort of what adds the lighthearted element to it. Um, it screams, you know, '80s teen horror. Um, but a little beyond that, even it, like because of the gore and the effects and stuff like that, it's not you know, it's not like a Night of the Comet or something. It's, but um. I think, yeah, the the fact that it's a horror element, it's got nudity, it's sexuality, like, and the it's got kind of a look to it. I mean, the the way the lighting is done and everything, I think people f- like to see that fantasy world. So yeah, Mike, do you think like Chris said that it, it's almost it, it does capture like the '80s teen horror movie? I guess. Well, it, it captures that kind of cookie cutter, like uh, abandoned house, like teens show up in an abandoned house and get slaughtered, kind of thing that was. I think really popular at the time, and yeah. I think sometimes like Cabin in the Woods joked around with it and stuff like that. That's the most modern example that I can say. Um, but this is like you know Evil Dead, right? It's kind of like a cookie cutter version of Evil Dead, and they just tried to amp up the sexuality and amped up the nudity. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, I I see a lot of Evil Dead in it, definitely in the cinematography. Uh-huh. I, I I get an Evil Dead feel. Some of the monsters, and the voices yeah, used. Yep, yeah, and... yep. I could see I could see the influence for sure. A uh, um, goddamn hand that comes to life. I think it's even <laughs> campy, it, but yeah. it's definitely campier to me than. No, it Evil it definitely Dead. is. Um, so I guess in that, that's probably where it's gotten its cult following. Um, as being kind of like a more jokey, extreme version mm-hmm. of Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. Kyle, would you agree with that? Um, I would, and I, I would probably take it a little further and say that this movie embodies like everything cheesy about the '80s has been like crammed into this movie. It's it is, I saw it as just straight up cheese fest. Like the the dialogue, the acting, I mean d- the quality of the film as a whole, as like technical standpoint. While cinematography was okay in some spots, there were some shots that were um, obviously. I I think I haven't pointed one out when we were watching the end of it. You know, and the sound is atrocious, the audio quality. So, I mean, all that stuff, he don't really give too much a shit about if you're just trying to watch the movie and enjoy it. And I think that's how it got its following is that it's a really just a fun movie to watch because it's so bad. Like, it's good. It's, well, that's what people think anyway. I think, do you, but, the okay. part. But, but when you compare, like, I, I kind of <laughs> wanted to compare this to Troma in a sense because that is really cheesy. Like, that's really cheesy. Do you feel like this movie had a happy medium between that side of it and, I think and true horror? I think it's saving grace is the fact that the filmmakers obviously pulled a lot of um, a lot from Evil Dead and from Sam Raimi, which gave it you know more gave 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 it more. There's more to work with. There's more 
um, structure and thought put into the design and stuff. So I think that's what saved it. Whereas Trauma was like their like Toxic Avenger came out. It was probably relatively eighty or early in the eighties with that style of filmmaking. So they were just making up as they go, and that's why that one I think looks worse mm-hmm. worse uh, off than this one does. But there's something about Trauma that I feel like it differentiates from this film is I feel like Trauma knows what they're doing. They're purposely doing that. Mm-hmm. They're using exploitation. They're doing it really tongue in cheek, and that's why it works. I felt like this film doesn't really do that. I feel like it, there's an interesting thing he he tried to do. He does two sequels after this, and the third one is more critically panned than even this first one is. Mm-hmm. And the reason why he claims it is is because oh, I went too much into the dark comedy aspect of it. And I'm like, well, how fucking far did you go? <laughs> like that's what well, I want to know because. Did this see, feel he a says lot? the terror was gone and the seriousness was gone. I'm like, I didn't feel like this film at any point in time. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons. And that's why, why I feel like this film fails. Well, I think like, it's one of the reasons why it's. It, I say cheesy because it is one of those movies that takes itself. I think they thought they were making on an amazing fucking horror film. I don't think at any point they thought tongue in cheek about anything they were doing. Yeah, and it just it's one of those movies where. Those are the best ones to watch when when they're bad because it's like they thought they were making a great movie, but really it's not that good. Mm. Chris, do you think they were trying to make a serious horror film when they were making this? Yeah, I, I not not Exorcist serious. I know I think I don't think they ever thought they were in that realm of filmmaking, you know. But um, <coughs> but yeah, I mean, and, and honestly, I can say um, as cheesy as it is, there are there are some frightening visuals. I think the makeup. Um, really comes through well in being scary and even like the uh the demonic monster that you sort of see uh before people start getting possessed and after they die is is a creepy looking thing like they did a really good job with that so i think that's what brought a lot of that you know a lot of that serious tone but then there was the scenes of course where people have these like amazing one-liners that make it more of a comedy i guess and Mike, that's what that, that's the point I was going to bring up. Do you think like a character like Stooge, it was not pre-planned to have some sort of uh, campiness or he's not a, so serious? He's an archetype. He's just he's just that buffoon that they put into these type of films. All these films, all these abandoned warehouse or abandoned cabins or whatever films, they all have <coughs> the cheerleader, the popular guy, the the, the stoner, the you know the sexed yeah. up friggin' it's girl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like they're all these things. He just played. The you know drunken buffoon. So he was supposed to be a certain type of way. Yeah, I, I don't. Again, I don't know. He's a he's a joke. He's I just what a I was, type. I think that's what I was saying. Where I think this movie embodies all of the eighties because all those character arch, archetypes have come. You know, have been introduced slowly from the early eighties up until this film was produced. So now this film has the culmination of all of that in it. It was a very diverse group of small, or a small group of people. Yeah, you know what? That was the one thing that, that grabbed me, actually, right away, because I, I remember I remember people talking about this movie, and, like, you know, and I'm thinking, like, party, okay. So I'm just, for some reason, I was envisioning something bigger and grander. Yeah. And then it was, like, five, six people in a house. It was, like, I this is, like, it, a really lame party. But that se- was The I, second one, I think, had a bigger party that I think the point up. of the, the having the small party was because um angela wasn't popular and she wanted to scare the popular kids is what i got from it that could be true but the punk you know stooge like i mean i wouldn't call, say he was popular he was just looking to party uh, yeah i can see him being the class clown popular like there's old stooge like, man everybody he's got the keg he's got the keg he's bringing the keg he's the guy <laughs> brings the keg <laughs> Turns out. So wait a minute, Mike. Do, is he the one that brings the keg, or is he, it not Stooge? He's bringing. The keg. I don't okay. remember him bringing a keg at all of this. No, party. he doesn't. No, he doesn't. I'm just saying he's the type of guy that probably he brings does. the boombox with yeah. dead batteries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're talking about Night of the Demons, guys, and we're going to talk more about that when we come back. Ants. What the fuck are you doing over there? Blessed be the sinners, for the Day of Atonement is at hand. Say what? This week we are talking about Night of the Demons. Uh, I think that I really, I really enjoy the writing of this movie. Uh, I think there is a lot of campiness to it. I think the writing is good, but the acting is bad. Kyle. Do you think that 
the writing is good and suffers because of the acting, or do you just think the writing all, all around is, is, is bad? Um, both. I think the okay. I think the the uh, the acting is bad, but I don't think they were given, you know, they were. It's not like they were given gold to work with. Like, I feel like a lot of it. I mean, a lot of it could have just been ad libbed at the uh, on, you know, right then and there. That's how it, it does feel like that from time to time. But it does feel like there's like planning about. All right, so your character is like the whore of the bunch, so you got to say this line and this line, and it's written in that way, and you're the drunk, so you're going to you know, act a certain way. Like I feel like it was written that way, which is a bad idea, and it didn't pan out. So you think the characters were too atypical? Like I yes, guess? there was no. I didn't feel. I I didn't feel like there was really character development with any of them. Even the even the main the main uh, woman. I forgot her name. Chris, do you think that there was any character development between the, any of the characters? Uh, character development. Yeah. yeah. Um, a little bit. Yeah. I think I think uh, Stooge actually had a, had a, a big character. I felt like he was like one of the most memorable and people reacted to him like throughout the film. I think actually Linnea Quigley carried this movie for me. Like, you know, the it's all about Angela. It's all about Angela, her party. She's on the cover, this and that. But I actually think Linnea Quigley was the, the better character in the film. I thought they focused on her more. Mike, do you think that Stooge? Uh, I don't know if Chris really. He, he yes, I agree that. Okay, let me let me f- first say this. I agree that Stooge is a big character, but Mike, would you th- would you say that he had character development? No, there's only one character has character development in this film, and it is. I uh, don't remember, but the only way I can describe him is the token black guy who is an absolute coward. Yeah, and then at the end. Gets the strength to somehow leap over a twelve foot wall, <laughs> and, pull, <laughs> and then leap back and over, and pull our yeah. he- our heroine back up over and save the day. I mean, other than that, he is cowering in cars. He is cowering in corners. He is praying and hoping that he survives. He's holding his ears, hoping everything's going to be fine, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, becomes courageous again. So that's the only character I can think of. Other than that, everybody else in this film is atypical. Every guy is a horned up sex offender waiting to happen. <laughs> the women in this film are just objects and unapologetically vapid. Well, what do you think about the the lead girl? Horrible. Helen? Is that her name? Absolutely. Was it? No, not Helen. It was um was it Helen? Judy? Judy, 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 sorry. I think she's absolutely atrocious. She is yes. atrocious, but we do kind the, of follow her. Yes, we do, but she's just there. Like, yeah, she's not. And she, she does what act. everyone else tells her. It's so weird. Like, they're, the scene where she's with, who's the main boyfriend guy? Not Sa- Sal. Sal? It, uh, but the, the, I can't remember the, his The jock name. or whatever. Yeah, who's supposed to be. It works. He sits there, and, he, and he, he brings her in, and he's like, oh, you know, you want to you know, get down? You want to have sex? And she's like, Make no, it. why? Why would you? Oh well, you had a date with that one guy, so I figured you're down to you know DTF, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then she's just like he basically slut shames her. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, he's like, "Well, I'm done with this," and she walks out the door. And after he's offended her, she's just like, "Wait, come back!" Like, it's the weakest thing that a, like there's no strength behind this woman. The only thing she does is she makes a blowtorch out of a like a tube, which is pretty cool. It's cool. It's pretty cool. But other than that, it is cool. I'm she's surprised the room didn't blow up because <laughs> that that gas that, that gas was out. pumping in there for a good long <laughs> while before that lighter kicked right. on. That whole that whole room would have blown up. No, you're right. As far as a deep story goes, there really isn't a whole lot of character development in this. There's film. There's not a whole I lot mean, of deep story to this movie in general, though. I, I mean, think. well, that I mean, but that seems like where you're trying to take it, Mike. Is that this is the only character that might even have any like semblance of. I mean, other than Sal, who's just an Italian American stereotype, <laughs> and then, but I mean, that the only, but accent. so true. We do get some backstory that he kind of has a crush on our heroine and uh, Judy. Yeah, Judy, and uh, he saves the day and dies. He was the one person in this whole film where I was like, oh, he died. That's a shame. Everybody else, I could care less well, about. And that, that that brings me to my next point: Are the main characters actually the teenagers or the demons themselves? Because I feel like the main characters are the demons themselves. Kyle, do you think that it's the teens or the demons? Because I feel like there's more of a focus on the demons. Um, yes and no. Like, um, I, I going back to what Mike just said. Like when Sal died, you actually he actually kind of gave a shit. I felt the same way. Like, so I felt like I felt like Sal could have been the main character, and I think once once the demons took over, they became the focus of the film and then it went back to the kids again. So it was jumping all over the place. I didn't feel like I didn't feel like this film had a true leader. Like that's one of the things. Another issue I had with it is I didn't like 
any movie you go see, there's got to be like a captain, you know, who's like kind of your focus, who's leading the show. And this movie just didn't have it. It's true. Did not have a Vin Diesel or The Rock. Yeah, they could have used Definitely one of those guys. Definitely did not have a Rock. <laughs> could have used one of those guys. Or at least a Sam Jackson and just come around screaming at people. So do you think that, uh, Chris, that maybe the story is like also the story, the main story, is just too generalized as far as horror films go in the 80s? Yeah, cliche. It's totally cliche. I mean, there's no getting around that. It's it's everything that you could compile about an 80s horror movie into an 80s horror movie about demons, you know, partying, sex, drugs, rock and roll, and evil. But Kyle, does that play into its cult film status, I guess? Well, also? I, think, I, think, I think that all those things adding to the cheesiness of it and the campiness make it that. But yeah, that's what I said earlier, was that this movie is like the culmination of everything cheesy and bad in horror films. It's all pumped into one, and it's just... I, I, looking at it now, it's like okay, it's just entertainment. But I'm kind of taken back because when they were making it, I really feel like they were, they were thought they were making like an awesome horror film. Like they tried to cram it all in, but it just doesn't work when you do it that way. Here's my question for the for the whole group too: is uh, uh, I want to switch gears a little bit here and talk about the acting. Who's the strongest actor in this film? Uh, right, strongest actor, just just, yeah. just barely Linnea Quigley because she plays maniacal great. Uh, anytime she's playing serious, though, n- not much better than she's anybody else. She's certainly my favorite. I, I, you know, I don't know that she's the best, but who is? I mean, I can't. You know, I think they're all pretty on par with each other's performances. Kyle, yeah, I'm gonna agree with Mike. No one said Stooge, which I'm a little surprised by. Mm, I don't. Uh, I think he plays his character as the asshole fat punk uh, perfectly. Oh, I definitely hate him. Yeah, he, he's the character that you want to see die. That just doesn't die, just turns into an evil demon that's just effing everybody up. But huh? then you get a little bit more of his character when uh, he thinks he's gonna he's gonna get it with Linnea. Like he, you know, kind of starts to calm down and be like, "Oh, come on, can I come in there with you?" And trying to be like sort of slick, you know, instead of just being a punk creep. And he has a girlfriend, which is kind of weird, right? He says, "My old lady nah, I don't gave know. me," unless he was talking about her. his mother. I mean, he's probably <laughs> he's probably talking about his mom. So wait, hold on. Um, I don't. I don't mean to jump around here, but we didn't really talk about the the opening scene with the old man dropping the apples and razor blades. Yeah, the apples and razor blades. <laughs> what did yeah. that? Did you guys? I mean, have we all seen this movie already once before? Did you see that coming? Yeah. Well, no, I didn't see it coming. But when it happened, I was like, oh yeah, that. Yeah, I wasn't like, I wasn't like, oh, like oh, it paid off. I, I think thought I a- thought it was so. I thought it was just. It was an excuse to have one more gag at the end. Which, it was not necessary. But I think that gag was actually really well done. It may have been, but it was not necessary for the film. It, it was their it didn't Friday add the 13th anything moment. at all. It was their Friday the 13th moment. It didn't add anything to the film. It's true. It in, what, in what way? That the, like, Jason jumping out of the water at the very end. It was yeah, just but it, 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 had, it, it wasn't part of the film. It was just like this. Ra- I, I feel like that. it was a big, dark joke that paid off at the end. It was like... All this minutia in the middle just to pay off this stupid apple joke that ends at the at the film. Well, maybe it was just them trying to get ca- capitalize on the Halloween thing because they, you really don't hear much about Halloween other than the house is a little bit decorated, kind of like it's Halloween, right? Yeah. So maybe they just wanted to get that one like uh, what do you call it, urban legend in there as far as Halloween goes. I suppose you, you could even say you could even say that that whole. I, if you cut the entire middle of the film out and just cut together the old man dropping the apples and then the ending, yeah, I would be like, oh, this is like some short film. This yeah, like right. A, this is like an idea for a short film, and then they just created this like teenage story in the middle to fill it out, mm-hmm. and then paid off at the end. So you had a problem with the pacing? <laughs> yeah, I I did have a problem with pacing, but we're not, we're not talking about. They're talking about the uselessness of that scene at the end. It, it has nothing to do. With, I didn't think it was even. I didn't even go like, oh. Or like gag, or like it, like you know. I think it was cool or anything. I just thought that was seriously the what the fuck moment of the film. I as soon as I saw that, I just like shook my head, like what the fuck am I watching? Well, I can say when I was a kid and I rented this movie, that scene stuck with me. Like I remembered that that scene because well, it's the most, it's definitely the goriest scene in the whole. I don't film. know that eye gouge. Uh, oh, that ouch, that ouch gets me. I don't know. The the lipstick and the nipple grosses me. Which, out the by most. the way, if I'm going to say one good thing about this film, uh, that was a great, that was a great effect. What? It looked good. Yeah, it looked real good when the 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 lipstick going into her nipple and she squeezed it in. Like, 
I thought that was well done. I, it left me wondering how they did it, and then I was like, oh, it's prosthetic. It's it's a yeah. They yeah. did a mold of her breasts, and then cut with like a little razor blade a slit in there and she just pushed it yeah, in. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see that. I was like, kind of like, it looked oh, wow. so convincing. It did look very convincing. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that also kind of bugged me in, in this movie a little bit that uh, that I think stands out is the lighting. Um, I got to knock the lighting a little bit on this film. I'm it, going 50-50 on that. Dude, there's some shots in it where it's just, it's so hard that it I, I feel that it takes me away from what's going on because I'm like, this lighting is just it's, so. Why is it so hard on their face, Mike? Do you think that th- that wh- I guess how would you rate the lighting alone as far as uh, do they w- go on? <laughs> Don't hold back, Cody. Yeah. Do they film it correctly? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, Mike. As far as the lighting goes, would you say that the lighting was was done well? No, there are scenes that are too dark, especially the one where uh, they they're in the crematorium. I thought it was lit pretty badly yeah like there it seems like there's no they only shot in no light but they had to because they were shooting on film they had to have some lights in there but uh no no i i mean it was acceptable yeah i would say that it was more acceptable the lighting was far more acceptable than like the sound yeah the sound of this film was fucking terrible <laughs> i do think that there was some gem lighting though chris how did you feel about the uh uh the the dance scene with the strobe light and that lighting i i actually really enjoyed the way that w- that looked yeah and it felt like it went with the music and everything it, like you know i thought that was really good i really enjoyed a lot of the spotlighting they did through the windows because the windows were all boarded up and they were also if you paid attention a lot of them ha- were like upside down crosses like that's kind of the style that they boarded the windows up in so when the light would shine through it would cast these creepy shadows on the wall i thought that was really Really clever um yeah i thought that dance scene was clever and 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 for as good honestly like you guys might disagree with me but i think the cinematography was really good and it moved around a lot so to light something like that in such a dark boarded up house like uh, it's a give and take for me some some of the outside scenes i thought it was like daytime it was lit so bright and then then some of the scenes inside the house i was like wow this is genuinely creepy I think that the lighting, or I'm sorry, I think that the cinematography w- was good, but I think uh, a lot of it was stolen from the Evil Dead. Kyle, would you agree with that? Yeah, like the uh, I like the whole demon vision thing. Mm-hmm. That's straight out of Evil Dead. You know, hell yeah, it was. <laughs> I almost feel like the effects for the demons themselves were also pretty much ripped off from that that film. Would you agree, Mike? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, like the uh, contacts and the the, the, the skin facial, tone, yeah. and yeah, and just yeah, it's really subtle. ultra deformed, but still it, vaguely it, human. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not totally it's not totally changed over. I mean, none of the none of the characters in Evil Dead were completely yeah, no know, one except for like the grew mother. mandibles or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it was the same kind of subtle demon possession thing going on. So Chris, do you think that that hurts the film or do you actually think that makes the film stronger? Because I actually think it makes the film stronger as as it, it gives it, it it was such a good point. It was just a good a good thing to rip off. I it, it does give the film some validity in the, the in the horror realm because if it was like cheesier effects this movie would not, I think, be where it's at. Well, and I also think that the 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 way they chose to shoot it, I mean, you're you're in the confines of just a house, and how do you make a house feel big? Well, moving through the hallways like they did, I mean, borrowing that Evil Dead style, I think, works for the film. But I actually think the the look of the demons weren't so much borrowed from the Evil Dead. I actually saw a lot more like Fright Night. Uh, in these demons oh yeah kind so, of cool. no yeah. i can see that too yeah, yeah. So, so i think that's a great point so i mean like i didn't have a problem with that i don't feel like he ripped anybody off per se any more than any other filmmaker would borrow style from you know kubrick or something like you know it's it's paying a little bit of homage to it and, but kind of trying your own thing a little <laughs> I mean, how much can you do in a in a house that it, looks like it's that? It's almost the exact same plot of Evil Dead. Yeah, it is. It has a a hand that starts walking around from Evil Dead too. I mean, I feel like he he might have blatantly ripped this off. The only thing that they didn't do is that the the kids weren't responsible for raising the demon. That That's, was the only difference. Well, what is yes, they the, were the seance, the seance, the seance, and the yeah. But I guess, no, but it I guess was Halloween. What, yeah, I guess so, uh, the under the assumption. Night, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Night, yeah. yeah. At the whole house. The whole the house. The whole house. Yeah. Not just a little bit, the whole house. <laughs> well, and we already said that, honestly, Evil Dead is not that original of an idea. 
it's really not that our kids go to a cabin and are hunted I mean, it's, by it's, evil. It's like, kind of like House really, on Haunted Hill, really, yeah, that came before I mean, that. But so if you you know you can't say that it wasn't borrowed from something like no, House it's on not. Haunted it's not Hill. like this story hasn't this plot hasn't been used a few thousand times. But I don't know. I think Evil Dead did a different thing with it when they made it extremely gory. And then this was just copying that. Let me ask you this: Since we said this is a story that's been been told a thousand times, do they tell the story any different than anybody else? No, though? no. Do they no. bring something new to the table that makes this the, the way they told this one special? No, I don't think so. At I all. think the fact that the main demon villain was a female is a little different. Like than what the we female in Evil Dead. Yeah, I liked her as the main. I I, I liked her as a demon way more than not. <laughs> I thought she was so much better as a demon than she was as just the, like... That's the other thing, too. Does this movie... Uh, do, are, is the cast too old? Is the two, are they too old? Yeah. No. I, well, for teenagers? Yes. Yeah, but is that any is that a, a surprise from any film? <laughs> yeah, but a lot of them look like they're they're 28 to 30. <laughs> Pushing 30. How, how old is Bruce Campbell when he did <laughs> Evil Dead? He doesn't look like he's a teenager. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to be a teenager in that, was he? I thought he was. Yeah, I thought he was, too. I thought they were supposed to be, like, college kids. I would have uh, said well, more college. Maybe, maybe probably, you're right. Maybe yeah. college kids. All right, guys. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to rate the film. And then we're going to play a fun game. Stick with us. Come on. I knew we shouldn't have come here. We're never going to get out of here. Yeah. Shut up, bro. Shut up. I swear I'm going to slug you. Help. Somebody get me out Hold of it. here. How do we know it's really her? Come on, Judy. Sure thing, Judy, stand back. Wait, what if not her? Come on, Raj, who else could it be? All right, guys, so one of the things I wanted to talk about, too, before we get to the rating real quick in the game, uh, one of the things I want to talk about is the opening credit scene, which I think is phenomenally done, and the music is, is amazing in that opening credit scene. It's all uh, drawn artwork, um, and it really, I think, sets the tone for the film. I thought it set the tone for... A film that I didn't end up seeing. If yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never picked it up. No, I picked up, but but like the I was super stoked to see this movie with that intro. The movie that I got following that intro, I was not stoked about. What happened? What took place? God, this sounds like a like a Charlie Rose. <laughs> I think that I think the I what think happened? the uh, the artwork really set the tone like because it's always supposed to be really better than the movie i mean that's like how you get somebody to actually take it home and i think it was a uh, definitely in my child eyes walking through the video store aisles i was really like i was always taken by it and looked oh you're at talking it. about uh, the cover we're, we're talking, talking about, about the, the intro yeah yeah, yeah we're talking credits. about it yeah Sorry. The animated thing. <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about your own thing? You go right. You had a question. You had a question, real quick. Question, Please don't hold back, Chris. Chris. You had a question. You don't need to hold back. On Why don't you show? talk about what you want to talk about? The, the intro is cool too. The, the show is <laughs> usually better when you talk about what you want to talk about, anyways. So <laughs> why don't you just go ahead and you know talk about what you want to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I guess I was really that felt that was really important. Mike did. The, <laughs> Mike, did the opening credits, did, did they get you pumped for a film that, yes. that you didn't yes. see? Yes, yes. As soon as I saw the opening credits, I'm like, oh, I'm going to love this film. No. And then it started. <laughs> <laughs> see, I think That's the opening credits were fun just like the movie. I, I, I got yeah. a fun vibe, for, especially the, the, the opening theme, too. Uh, I enjoyed the, mu the music in this movie. Um, did it, did, did, Mike, did you like the music? Did yeah, you music? actually, did, there's feel? one thing I loved about this was the, the soundtrack. I felt like... Every song in this was an eighties hairband version of Goblin from Suspiria. Yes. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it had all like totally. these creepy voices in it and like weird synthesized mm -hmm. kind of things that were in the background. I thought it was kinda cool. But other than that, it was yeah. Chris? Music was good, man. I think it was appropriate for the movie, but I it didn't really stand out to me as being like particularly more awesome than any other eighties horror. Do you think that the the sound was uh, her, her, like hurt the music? The sound mixing, uh, the sound mixing with the music, uh, is not the greatest. No. Um, no. Do you think that 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 hurts the film or, or the soundtrack itself? Does it take it away from it, Kyle? Um, no, I don't think it takes it away. I just think it 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 wasn't balanced properly because there was a lot of times with this movie where I kept turning the volume up, turning it back down when the music started playing. 
the vo- the, all the all the dialogue was mixed really really low and all the sound was just dropped on top like unmixed or something that's what it sounded like to me like they didn't balance it in okay all right guys let's get to our ratings i would like to rate this uh with tubes of lipstick um, let's start off with Kyle. Kyle, why don't you give us your rating for Night of the Demons? Uh, I'm going to be rating this movie two tubes of lipstick. That's two. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it's an enjoyable film if you're going to just not, if you want to laugh at it, basically, is the way I, 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 I see it. It's, it's cheesy, campy, poorly acted executed man there's some crazy scenes in it yeah i'll give them that there's some i want to say a lot of gore because i don't really remember there being that much but i mean it's a movie you could put on on a halloween and just have it on in the background while you know people are mingling and shit so i give it two two tubes of lipstick from kyle mike how many tubes of lipstick would you give it well uh i'm just gonna say it i hated this film i despised <laughs> it it made me Personally, it made me angry when I watched it. I was, <laughs> I was pissed at the end of it. Um, oh yeah, it, it, I can see it as being fun. It's like, I guess you could use it as a drinking game, um, but it's not like a beautiful shit fest like Troll Two is. <laughs> it, it's bad, but like not that you know. I don't know. It doesn't have some weird magic to it. Um, so, you know, I was gonna give it half a lipstick tube, but I guess I like the soundtrack. So one. One. One lipstick tube from Mike. I'm going to go next. Uh, I uh, actually agree with Kyle on almost every point that he made, and I think that's why this movie's fun. I know that sounds weird, but I like watching it because it's so bad it's good. I think it, it falls under that category. The writing's terrible. The acting's terrible. It's filmed horribly, but it's a lot of fun. I don't know why I find it a lot of fun. Maybe it's because everything's so bad, but I just I couldn't stop watching it. Like, I just had a lot of fun with it. So I am personally going to give this uh, three and a half lipstick tubes uh, for Night of the Demons. Chris, what's your rating on this? I'm going to do three lipstick tubes on this one. Um, I really do like the film. I love the film. I love how it starts. I always love films that take place on Halloween. I'm okay with the uh, typical storyline. Um, and I'm okay with the campy, cheesy dialogue and, and, and all the cliche characters. I have no uh, issues with that. I love, this, I love the effects in this film. I think that that, to me, is what really sells it, along with the camera work. And so not a perfect film, um, not something I could watch all the time, but I'd put it on at Halloween. I wanted to uh, actually yeah. add something because Mike Mike said a, something a, a that li- really a lipstick tube you like to add or what? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm <laughs> Don't be adding lipstick tubes to not, my rating. No, I'm definitely not adding any lipstick tubes this week. But Mike said something that I think really summed it up for me, and it was um, I think what my problem with it is is that it doesn't have enough of something shitty. That's why I don't enjoy watching the movie. Like, if it went all the way and it was just ridiculous, off-the-wall, campy, and and funny in that respect, I probably would have enjoyed it. But because they took it seriously, um, it just doesn't come across super enjoyable. In the words of Robert Downey Jr., you never go full retard. You never go full (laughs) retard. You never go full retard. (laughs) How does that relate? Doesn't <laughs> doesn't doesn't at all. Doesn't Chris. At all. It, no, it doesn't Sorry. really because you, you. I disagree with it. You never go f- like they weren't tr- they weren't trying to achieve full on campiness. So I think that's why. Well, isn't that, that the opposite of what you're saying? They, I know, but they I, did pull back I, and it was horrible. Had they gone full, they would have <laughs> they would have had a magical <laughs> moment. Yeah, no, no. If they would if they would have went into this movie saying we're going to make a campy horror film. They would have made a terrible film. I think they went into it making a serious film and made a really good bad movie. Mm-hmm. Nah. Yeah, I think there's some genuinely scary m- moments in this film, and there's I some genuinely cheesy moments in this film. Never once thought I was scared in this. No, this movie, uh, that, this movie was not scary to me at all. One of the things that's missing horribly is uh, no suspense. There's no suspense in any of the. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, cheesy jump attack. scares. It is cheesy jump scares. I don't think I, I don't think there was one moment where I was scared like no. a jump. Well, like, I didn't feel anything. This is this is also you know nineteen late nineteen eighties. Yeah. I mean, you this weren't is scared. Different. When, you weren't scared when that one guy came out. What? 
That's what? pretty much what all the jump scares were. It was like somebody reaching a hand. What about when the guy got it. knocked out of the window? I thought that was hilarious. Jump front that was flipped out of the window? What's that? Front flipped out of the window? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If they front flipped over the fence too, and then the way they landed totally. Didn't I, I would like to give a that. separate rating uh, for flips and acrobatics. <laughs> I want to give this five lipsticks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So you know what? I think it's that time. I think it's time for America's favorite new game. Who the hell am I? I am your host, Cody Everett. We are here playing Who the Hell Am I with Mike, Chris, and Kyle. All right, guys. So, here's what I want to know. Who the hell are you? Kyle? Do you want to explain the game? Sure. For people who are listening to the first time? <laughs> sure. Yeah. If you're listening for the first time and you haven't sure. heard... Sure. Sure. <laughs> if you're listening for the first time and you haven't heard us play this game, it's basically uh, we get three um, clues to guess who the person is, a character or an actor. So, if Kyle goes and he's Tom Cruise, he could be like Mellow Yellow. That's pretty damn good. Or he could be like... Um, uh, Is your character Tom Cruise? Yeah, Tom Cruise. <laughs> so th- th- it's something like that to give you clues. In. And whoever guesses gets the point. First hand up gets the first guess. First guess, yes. Okay. Wait, does all the clues have to be read first before we can throw hands yeah, up? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I don't think so. No, no. I, I think if you get it on the first clue I read, shoot your hand up. Because, right. you could be wrong. because once you put your hand up, you have to go first. Even if the next two clues I give... Fuck you up completely. Right. You got to say something. And, and can we add another rule too? Uh, if you get the wrong answer, you can't answer again, right? You can't be like, wait, then it's not that one. You can't. No, you get one guess. You get one guess. Yep. Everybody okay. gets one guess. Yeah, no Nobody gets it. I get the point. Okay. All right, Kyle. Then who the hell are you? Well, I am an actor. Clue number one. Oh, okay. The Losers Club. The Losers Club. There was there was like a notable noticeable amount of confusion when you <laughs> said that. <laughs> huh? the, the, the Losers Club. Club. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No hands are in the area. Nope. Okay. Clue number two. Monkey's brain. Oh, Chris has a hand up. Right. Well, tell me what the first clue was, real quick. Oh. Fuck you! Oh, you already oh, put oh, your God, hand up. Yeah, no, it doesn't ahead. matter. You give me my read me <clears> my two clues. First clue was this guy's cheating over here. This guy's. Yeah. I know over he's here. fishing for more more data. This is already Buying data that time. you've said. Buying right. time. Yeah. Clue number one was the Losers Club. Clue number two, Monkey's Brain. And Indiana Jones. No, it's an actor. Yeah, Harrison an actor. Ford. No, <laughs> okay. you only get one guess. That was it. Yeah, you're out. Okay. What's the all right, clue number? Three. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Clue number three. Can I have redemption round? No. Shut up. And that is not clue number three. Clue number three. I wish I didn't have to spit out this cake. Oh God, this is stupid. I'm glad I got it wrong. I know. Go. Cody? Tim Curry. You got it. Oh, shit. Oh, sesame cake. <laughs> why was he that part was of, good. Why was man. he part of the Losers Club? Uh, because he played Pennywise, and he was attacking the Loser Club, which was the, oh, the kids. Oh, yeah. I it was thought their game. that. Come on. Crap. But I didn't think Pennywise. Monkey's Brain. Anybody know where that's from? That was a good round, though, dude. That was um, Monkey's Brain, a a uh, delicate cu- cuisine served in cl- in the movie Clue. I yeah. was thinking is of... Is that uh, what we ate? Uh, I was thinking of yeah. Temple of Doom. I was All thinking right, that, cool. too, for a second. Co- Cody gets the first point. Woo. Yeah. Don't man. I always? Don't I always? Next up on Who the Hell Am I? I want to know who the hell Chris Willenbrecht is. Okay. I will... I will love it if you guys get this, honestly. Actor or character? This is a character. Okay. I live in a model. I'm going to go for it. Uh, is it Beetlejuice? Yeah! God <laughs> damn it! Wow. wow that, was that was fast. So that was a great guess. I, I wanted to hear the second just to be sure, but... Uh, do you yeah. want to hear my other two questions? I would yes, love to. yes, okay. yes. I desperately want to be married. And sand scares me. <laughs> God, <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Good guess, Mike. All right. Next up on the show, we have Mike. Mike, who the hell are you? Okay. This is a character from a, from a cult film. Ooh, gave an extra bit of a clue there. Well, yeah. they, I thought they, always had, I thought they all had to be cult films. Wait, but maybe all these no. clues There's only place. like five or six hundred. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay. Here, my first clue is I love babies. I love babies. Babies. 
Thanks, Chris. Okay, second clue. Character. I'm a fantastic juggler. Fantastic juggler. This is from some stupid ass movie. Oh God. Nope. God. Okay, let me hear the third one. And the third one is my clothing doesn't leave much to the imagination. I love babies and I'm naked. <laughs> Oh my god, that sounded so wrong. <laughs> I did. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I'll throw a guess. Go uh, for it. Is it the fairy from Wizards? No. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, got, I think I have it. I think I have it. Raise that hand. My clothing doesn't leave much. Mad Max. No. My, clo- <laughs> my clothing, <laughs> I love babies. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a fantastic juggler. I'm a fantastic juggler. And clothing. I'm going to give you... Now, go ahead. This is so stupid. <laughs> I hate this one. I hate this one, too. Fuck you. I'm not even guessing. Okay, Throw the, something out there. Come on. You got to throw something out there. Um, Steve Gutenberg. No, it's not Steve <laughs> Gutenberg. The answer, <laughs> good guess. The answer is Jareth, the Goblin King from Labyrinth. What the oh fuck? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, that makes total sense now, actually. All right. Okay. Fuck you. Whatever, Mike. Two Fuck points, you. baby. Fuck Whatever. You, Next up is probably the most shining star of the episode. We're going to go with Cody. Cody, who the hell are you? Well, thank you, Cody. Um, I am a character. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I can cloud men's minds. Okay. So you're a woman. I can also be invisible. That's clue number two. Number three, my real name is Lamont Cranston. Cranston, sorry. Lamont Cranston. Mike? The Shadow. There you go. Ah, you bitch. The Shadow. Mm. Mike cleaned house this episode. Just like yeah. last time, baby. Clean mm-hmm. house. Wow. First off, I want to say thanks for listening, guys. I really appreciate it. That's our episode for this week. Um, you can find us on Facebook. Please look us up there. You can find us on iTunes. Rate us five stars. You can find us on Instagram at occultfilm underscore review. Also on Twitter at occultfilm underscore review. You can find Mike at... At Mike Salustio on Twitter. Or you can find me writing about filmmaking at friendlyneighborhoodfilmmaking.com. That's our show for the week. Um, and we'll see you next week. Wait, don't forget. Fans out there, have we missed a cult film? Yes, we have. Okay, go out there. Tell us. Go on social media. Let us know. We will f- cover that film for you. Yeah, we've already covered one fan. If we film, like it, so <laughs> well, not yet. We're not going to do them all. We're not going to do them all. <laughs> we've already covered one fan's film, so make sure that you get your choice in because we might uh, plug you on our show, like or we send did. you a gift. Who like, knows we, what will happen? Yeah, we don't know. Something in it for Just you let guys. Us plug you. Let us plug you. Plug you right on the show <laughs> <Yeah>. live. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Have a good week.